in order to understand the app that we developed throughout this immersive, one must understand the passion behind our client's idea, which is the story of St. Guinevere. Guinevere was a greyhound dog, to be exact, an English greyhound, whose owner was a knight from Leon. One day, the knight left hunting, leaving his infant son with Guinevere, and on his return, he found a nursery in chaos, and his son was nowhere to be found. There was Guinevere with bloody jaws. So thinking that Guinevere had killed his son, he killed the dog as well. An instant later, he hear a baby crying. There was his son on arm near a dead snake. Guinevere had protected the baby by killing the snake. So realizing of his mistake, he told the locals of what the dog did for his family. So the locals started praising Guinevere as a saint, whereas they leave their babies near his thumb for the dog to protect them and heal them. So we're telling you this story for you to understand the passion behind our client idea, whereas he wanted, he wanted to for us to develop a platform for dog owners to communicate with the outside world in case if their dog are lost and found. Throughout this school year, the development of the app, we ran through various problems on environment level, computers level, and also as a team level, whereas uh, this summer so we were forced to move uh, remotely. But as a team, we persevere and uh, we use uh, various tools that was helpful for us to keep track of our work. Without being said, I will uh, pass it to Kelsey, who will talk about one of those tools. Kelsey and I will be talking about the Favro board, which is our tool for organizing the story map, release planning, current sprint work, and the completed cards. So we have a backlog board of all of our feature cards organized into columns of similar themes. And this is the work that we got from our story mapping session with the client at the beginning of the project. Um, we break these similar themes into separate releases so that we work on one uh, feature type at a time. Um, one of those releases, we move the cards into the Kanban board where the present work exists. And then something that I will show you on the following, on one of the following slides is how we break our Kanban board up into these columns for up next development, co-review, acceptance, and done. And once cards move into the done column on Kanban, at the end of the week, we move them into a shipped timeline board um, where they are organized by the weeks that they were completed. So then we can have um, a track for what cards were done during what uh, time frame. So this is a screenshot of the different boards that we have. So you can see our Kanban board at the top is where the present work exists. And then releases one through seven are broken down into similar themes um, and functionality types. So we have uh, cards broken down into there. Ship timeline is where the completed work goes. And then story map is our entire backlog that we got from our story mapping session with the client right at the beginning of the project. This is an example of the Kanban board. Um, so we have this broken down into up next, which is work to be done soon. Development, which is work that's currently being uh, worked on, coded and tested. Code review is where the cards go after development and that is for the rest of the team to check out and make sure that the uh, code is up to standards. Um, acceptance is where we move the cards after we're happy with them and we're waiting on client approval. And then finally done is where they go after uh, we have an okay from our client that that feature has been completed. We also have a picture here of the release example. Um, so we break these down into similar goals. So the goal for this first release was to get the beginning sequence working. So that's everything that a user would have to do to kind of start using the app. Um, so the cards that we pulled in here, we're creating an account verifying account, entering information, and then um, signing in with Facebook, Google, and a non-linked email. Um, and then so you can see here that we broke down into columns of like sign up functionality and sign in functionality. 
Finally, we have our shift timeline. So you can see that during the week of 913, this is an example of some of the cards that were shipped. 920, we uh, had shipped some of these cards as well. And then uh, shipped on February 18th as well as some of these cards. Um, so one of the differences that we um, found between Favreau and Trello, which most of us are more familiar with, is that Favreau offers a bit of flexibility. Um, so in a Favreau board, you can put dependencies between cards. Um, for example, say that one card has to be completed and into a certain column before another. Um, you have the option to use these multiple boards like how we have. Um, and finally, uh, Favreau is a paid service, whereas Trello is free for teams. Um, thankfully, Favreau was able to um, help us out and get us a little bit of a free plan. Um, so that because we were a student organization uh, using it for a school project. Um, so next I will be passing it off to Nick for an application demo. Thanks, Kelsey. My name is Nick and I'm going to be demoing this app for us. This is our main landing page with the St. Guinefort emblem embroidered on the front. Um, obviously you have the option to register or if you've already registered, you can log in. I have already created an account, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Once you get here, you will land on the main news feed of your zip code, which can be seen up here. You can add posts about your dog. Check out my dog. He's cool. And then I can add in an image of this dog. So I have one here of my family's dog, and I'm going to post him out. So there he is. There's the post. And I can make change to this. I can edit it and delete it. Um, if I were to say have another user, which I can do that, I'm going to go over here to an incognito browser and log in as another, another user. Now, see, he can see my post also, but he can request a chat with me. If he does so, I will get an email saying that this user wants to chat with me when I like to approve it. If I approve it, then it will show up here as an option for them. So you can see my username here and we can have a conversation with them. Um, before I send a message to myself, I'm gonna go over here to my account and make sure push notifications are on. And I'll be just, hey, what's up? And you can see here I get a notification from the web browser and also here on the application I get one. And if I click this message, it will take me directly to my conversation with this user. If I go over to my dogs, as you can see, this is the, the same dog. Um, if I happen to have lost my dog, maybe he went missing. He, he got out of the yard. I can report him lost. And in doing so, it will give me a notification at the top that he has been reported lost. And it will say it right here. But it will also tell this user that too. And if they click on this link, it will take them to the post of this dog and telling them to please contact me if they know anything, and they can request chat here too. So it makes it so that the user doesn't have to ha allow people to contact them if they feel that they may not be, be being truthful. You can enable and disable push notifications in your account settings. Uh, you can change your password and you can view all your dogs. Um, if you happen to have found your dog and you report him found, and you go back over to the home screen, he will no longer be here. See, just this one post. Um, we also have the functionality for the admin. Um, if I log out and log back in as the admin user, I also can look at all the users. So in this current moment, there are three users here. I can make any of them an admin or I can delete them. I also have the option to add new breeds to our breed list or edit any of the ones we have or delete them. These breeds show up in our add dog options. So in this drop down menu, I have a German Shepherd. I can add that. Uh, maybe he's mixed with a Basset Hound. And his name's Doggo. He's uh, seven years old, an older dog, you know, not too old though. Um, he might bite. And I can add an image of him. Let's go over here. I have some images saved up. Uh, there we go. And I can add that dog. And there he is. 
He looks like a ferocious critter, I know. Um, we also have the option, if your dog goes lost, that you might want to print a flyer. And then that way you can print it and either pass it around or you can take this and put it on Facebook or something. Um, I think that's about all we have left. Um, it's been a lot of fun working on this project. Learned a lot of interesting things. So now I'm going to pass it over to Michael for the review of what we had troubles with. Some problems our team encountered during development were with push notifications. When we first started working on the project in the fall semester, we initially wanted to try using a progressive web app to develop Twilight Bark. However, part of Twilight Bark's functionality is sending push notifications to users to notify them of lost dogs. At the time, we were not aware that there was any way to send push notifications with the progressive web app, so we decided to instead use React Native. We learned later that year from Professor Starr that there's actually a workaround for sending push notifications with the progressive web app. During development with React Native, some of our team members were having issues setting up their environment, and it lasted a few weeks and it slowed down our initial progress. We decided at the beginning of the spring semester to switch from React Native to a progressive web app. We decided to try out using Laravel. This meant we had to abandon some of our progress from the React Native app, however we were able to keep catch up to this progress pretty quickly using Laravel. While we were using Laravel, we were having some issues um, with setting up the database. There's a lot of specific steps, so we had to make sure that everyone had their database set up correctly on their system. We also had to set up Composer on each person's system so they, that they could run the app. My biggest takeaway from working on Twilight Bark is mobile app development. Before working on this project, I had never worked on any mobile apps before, but from working on this project, I got more experience with mobile apps and I became more interested in learning more. My personal reflection throughout taking this class is that I've learned a lot. But first, I was able to be part of an amazing team that took an idea and built an app off of it. And it was an experience because it is something new to me that I've never known how to do before. So just seeing the outcome, it was great. Uh, secondly, it helped me build up my team skills as a team member. Um, I was able uh, to communicate better, to hold myself accountable, and as well uh, to really experience a first-hand project, whereas I have to meet both with the client and the professor. So it was uh, good to know how to use my schedule and time accordingly and to work with uh, the other members. From this project was that it's very important to plan your work ahead of time and know your frameworks ahead of time. Um, our team ran into a little bit of technical problems where we chose a framework that did not end up working well for us and we actually didn't um, create the current version of the app until second semester because we did have to start over. Um, we could have avoided this by working with Mr. Starr sooner um, throughout the length of the project. Um, but overall, I think that we mitigated those issues pretty well and our team worked well together. I'm uh, Nick Kist. Um, I'd say my greatest takeaways from this semester have been uh, just learning the new frameworks. Um, I mean, we started our first half of the year on um, React and Node.js and ended up learning that that's just a really hard framework to run or work with. Um, we would originally talked about doing Ruby on Rails, but uh, we were misunder misunderstood that that would have about progressive web apps and notifications. Um, so we ended up switching halfway through, it made it so much easier to develop using Laravel and PHP. Uh, we had so much problems with dependencies in Node.js along with um, and just the general lackadaisical uh, framework, not having a real structure behind it. Uh, Laravel gave so much more structure and ways to do things. Um, we also had, you know, to manage our time. That was a very useful skill to learn and um, uh, has been a great semester. I mean, it's just been so instructive. Um, so much learned in such a little bit of time. Um.